Hi, this is Misha, and this video is on a pretty unique Japanese rifle from World War II. This is the so-called Special Navy, or Naval Special, Type 99, Arasaka. And this is a pretty late war invention of the Japanese Navy. Now, also on the table, I brought out just a standard 1944 production, maybe late 43 production, Arasaka. This one's Nagoya. The Naval Special. Now, early on, the Japanese Navy was always getting second best guns, second options on guns from the Japanese Army. In 1937, 1938, they purchased guns from Italy. These became the Type I, Arasaka Carcano hybrid. We have a video on that. In 1944, the Japanese Navy, specifically their Special Landing Forces, many kind of equate the Special Landing Forces to Marines. This isn't really true. They weren't as elite. They were basically just um, naval infantry type units. Either way, they needed guns and all of the Japanese arsenals were busy providing for the army. The war was not going in their favor. So what the Navy did, they worked with their own, own factories, own armories, own arsenals, mostly at ship type yards, and they came up with the Naval Special here. Now, this fires the 7.7 millimeter Arasaka cartridge, same as this rifle here. Also, right like this rifle, this has a 25 inch and some change barrels. Generally speaking, this is just like this gun. The major difference is that this gun is built almost entirely from cast metal parts, cast iron. Very few parts on this gun are steel, hardened steel. The ones that are, are the bolt body and the barrel. Everything else is cast iron. Now they got it, kind of got this idea from training rifles. Now in Japan they would have training guns that were produced by private companies that schools or even families could buy on their own to help train their children to be good little uh, warriors. And there were several companies that made trainers, I believe it was over 30. They're almost kind of like the, um, you know, in America we had a lot of cast iron type guns. I remember I found some old uh, toy guns that were, one was a 1911, one was a Luger. They were just um, kind of a die cast, you know, pot metal type metal that people would use back in the 50s and uh, 40s and 50s for their kids. Very interesting. Well, in Japan they used training rifles, which could either not fire at all or they could fire wooden blanks. My point is, though, they used cast iron parts, including the receiver. So what the Japanese Navy did in 1944, they made a cast iron gun capable of firing the standard 7.7 by 58 millimeter cartridge. Now, components such as the front sight and its protective ears, barrel band or bayonet lug barrel band, secondary barrel band, rear sights, in fact these are pretty much just straight off a trainer. Butt plate. Trigger guard, trigger, tangs, magazine floor plate. These are all cast iron and all pretty much like on a trainer, even I'm sure they even took trainer parts making some of these. The major difference is in the bolt and the barrel. Excuse me, the bolt and the receiver. Sorry, this one is very sticky, so I'm going to have to kind of yank it. I don't know why. It's, it sticks right here. There we go. This bolt is predominantly cast as well. The knob, which is welded on, as with most Arasakas, is cast iron. The safety is cast iron. Only 
this main body with the locking lugs and the firing pin are, hard, are hardened steel. Now the, what happens, if you look into this receiver here, this receiver is also cast iron, which normally would not stand up to more than one or two shots through a full power. What they did, and it'll be a little hard to show on camera, but they used a, a barrel extension. This barrel comes all the way back into the receiver here. So inside the receiver here is actually still part of your barrel. This is why this receiver is wide. See, there's a step here and a step here. And then there's a step on this other side here where it steps down. This cast iron receiver flares out to accommodate the barrel extension. If you look at the standard Arasaka, you'll see it, it has a much milder, thinner receiver up here. This is because this receiver, so there's no step on this side. This is a steel receiver, as on most Arasakas, and the barrel just screws into it. Whereas on the Naval Special, flip it around here, you have a barrel with the extension going into the cast receiver. You can see these pits in the receiver. There's another one on this one somewhere. I don't know if, oh yeah, it's back here. Right there. Those aren't points of damage. This is just how these receivers were cast. They, they knew the receiver wasn't handling really any strain. It's just there to hold everything together. So there would be small inclusions. There's also a naval anchor on this, which is kind of neat. And for more people into newer guns, you'll recognize having a barrel with an extension using an, a, a weaker receiver is exactly what the AR-15 does. AR-15 upper receiver, low receiver, are made of, uh, made of uh, aluminum alloy. This is made of cast iron, but the idea is still the same. But then you have a hardened steel barrel extension. This gun is pretty loose and rattly. They, uh, they were made in a hurry. They were made with whatever parts they could get their, uh, their hands on at the naval shipyards. And they only made about 6,000 before production ended in 1945. Now this is a relatively early one. Come on. Not sure I got it in there straight. This, yeah, that, that likes to turn out true on this gun for some reason. It's real sloppy. But these are rare enough that when you find one, you kind of just, there we go. Yeah, the, the extractor sometimes gets a little wink, winky on it because the extractor is not hard to steel either. I'm sure it's bent over time. The trigger. The trigger is interesting. It's actually a very short pull, much shorter on a, than on a regular wartime Arasaka. See how much easier that bolt works. Yeah, this has a much longer pull. Weight-wise, they're about the same. This one actually has a pretty sharp break point, but it's a very crisp break point. It's a very short pull. Not bad for a cast iron trigger, I'd say. <laughs> One thing you'll notice these lack are sling swivels. It doesn't even have a rope hole in the back. No swivel up here on the front. These were meant to be carried with a uh, rope sling. Kind of like the late rope holes. So they were making these pretty cheap, fast, and dirty. And it, and it shows. But as I was saying, you can't really be picky with these. They're pretty uncommon. You see a lot that are sporterized. And so you, you get what you get. This is an earlier one, as I said. It has adjustable sights still, even if they're trainer style sights. And they are bent. They are bent from the factory because again, we have a cast ladder and I guess they just didn't care. Full length handguard, as you see. This does not have a provision for a cleaning rod. It has a small, tiny hole in the end tier, but it goes there. It's not really big enough for a rod and there's no channel in the stock. So never really had, never had a cleaning rod. I could maybe put a trainer nail type fake rod in, but that would be it. 
those were the early ones. Later on, they would do go to more of a last ditch look. They would cut back the upper hand guard, only doing a short one. They would go f to a fixed rear peep sight, like a lot of other last ditch. And they even do a few so-called carbine versions with the approximately 21, 22 inch barrels. They did not do those because they wanted them to be shorter. They did them because it saved on steel. They could make two barrels out of a blank or a barrel and a half or something, but um, it was an economy feature. So even with some of the late naval specials, shortened the barrels. I'd love to kind of find one of those. Yeah, they made these in 44 and 45. I think they quit making them around spring of 45 with about 6,000 built. I was very fortunate to find this one. It was in a gun shop marked as a training rifle. They did not know it was a naval special. So I snapped it up. It's kind of funny. It has an anchor on it. I called the shop and told the guy, and he said, Hey, we got this said Navy marked trainer. 150. Uh, okay, it's kind of high for a trainer, but why not? When I got there, he said, well, I think it's kind of neat. I like the uh, the anchor. I think I'll keep it. And I said, well, you know, we talked on the phone and thought we kind of had a deal. I got a ride up here and he agreed with me, but he said 200. I guess he was trying to, you know, I still paid it. And I don't think he knew immediately why, because naval specials back then were going for probably six to 900 today. There was one on Gunbroker a couple of weeks ago, and the guy was uh, asking 13 or 14. I don't know if he got it, but it was a pretty nice one. I think it had a little less finish on it than this one, but this one, like I said, has its own issues. And it's, it's a good gun, but it um, there's a crack in the stock here that I repaired. And uh, as you see, the bolt's a little wonky, but I didn't buy it as a shooter. Um, most modern collectors would agree th these aren't to be fired, even though they were built for the full power 7.7 .7 cartridge. As rare as these are, it'd be pretty dang silly to buy one and shoot it. And there's so many other 99s like this standard one here you could buy for a fraction of the cost that'll be safer and easier to shoot. So, you know, naval specials are more for the curiosity. If you just want a 1944 gun, find one like this. Pretty well everywhere. And these are perfectly safe to fire. I'd have no compunction. And if you broke apart on this, finding a replacement would be pretty easy. Finding an actual part for a naval special, if you broke something on this one, would be um, difficult to say the least. But an interesting, this is heavier by the way, which is kind of interesting because of all the iron thicker iron parts so it's a little bit heavier of a gun but i think it's a fascinating part of uh, japanese history and there are several variations hopefully one day i'll be able to find a couple more but yeah i just wanted to share an interesting uh, part of history here if you have any questions or comments please post them below if you enjoy japanese type guns we have several other videos now on them including some rare ones and some pretty standard ones so if you're interested, please check out the playlist. We have a one called the Japanese Firearms. Really appreciate you tuning in. If you like the video, please click like. If you haven't already subscribed and liked the video, please subscribe if you have time. As always, this is Misha, and we'll catch you next time.